Hi there, in this video I will show you how to put together this Wicked House, which is a 3D SVG file from Simply Crafty SVGs. So here are all the pieces that we'll be using to put together the house. Um, these are actually the black pieces. I've gotten feedback that um, it's hard to see when I assemble black items. So um, anyways, I'm doing this in vanilla, but it is black. I already have them made. So the black pieces that I'm going to use. So just to let you know, that's the reason why they're not black. So um, hopefully it'll be easier for those watching the video to know how to assemble the black pieces. So let's get going. So these are the pieces to the hat. Here are the brim pieces. We have um, the top and the, the actual bottom of the side. So we'll go ahead and get this started. What you want to do first though for this, and you don't have to do it right away, but before we put this together, to curl this a little bit, and you can do it on the edge of a, gently round it with the edge of your table, just to give it a little curve. Um, we want to do that for all the pieces before we put it together, but we're, we're not going to do that first, but I just wanted to show you that, and we'll get back to it. And for this, so this is what it looks like again, the hat, let me get the finished one in black. So we have these holes, that's a window, and that will be the chim where the chimney goes. And um, I already put it together, and I lightly inked it a little bit, and um, with a little, like, Wilted violet, so wilted violet distress oxide. That's what I used just to give it kind of a, a purple sheen because I'll have some purple frames. So we're going to go ahead and start with the top. So you want to go ahead and fold it like this and make sure for these tabs that you fold down mountain first and then valley up, and that'll help train them for when we glue it onto this piece right here. So all we've got to do is Add glue to this tab. I want to get good coverage, but you don't need a lot. I'm using art glitter glue, which a little goes a long way. And American Craft textured cardstock is what I prefer. So we're going to go ahead and I'm just kind of lining it up. And it helps to get something small and thin. You can use a wooden chopstick. Here's a here's a plastic one I got from IKEA a long time ago. But it works because it has a blunt end and it's smaller so I get in there and it's gonna be my backing so I can instead of using my finger to get that glued. So that's and then we want to glue this. So be careful here when you glue this. So we're going to fold it like you see. But when you glue it, you want to make sure, make sure this is in uh, focus. But make sure and we're going to add glue to this tab lightly. That you don't take this edge over the tab. Just go up to the tab or just slightly to the left of it. And the reason I want to do that is if you go too tight, that top piece won't fit inside. I mean, you can go try to go exact as possible. If you're not exact on both, and we're just we're human beings, we're not machines, so it's never going to be like exact, exact. So you can see right there. I'm just going to use the table to my benefit. And there we go. So the next thing we want to do is go ahead and glue this in. So the same place where we have the tab, you can see where the tab is, you want to line it with the same edge. So wherever that tab is, you want to line it up that way. So these two tabs will go right here and right there. So we're going to go ahead and anchor one. And again, double check before you put it on. We want this one to be, if you look underneath, it's the one to the left of the where we just glued the tab. 
So we want to do the same one on here. So that's where we just glued. So we're just going to go right to the left, uh, to the left of it. Not <laughs> confusing. We use the word right. So I've been wanting to do a house like this for a while. You can see I'm just lining up that edge. I just, uh, this is in 2021. Can't even keep the year straight. It's been a busy year for me. So now we're going to go ahead and glue the other one right next to it. And you can fold these tabs in, make sure they go inside. So we can either fold them back and glue them from. I say that, but let me let me make sure they're in before I do it. There we go. Then get this lined up. So I'm lining this edge up to the inside tab fold. So it's really important to get that first one attached well. And then here you can either gently lift it up and add glue that way, right here, or you can um, go inside and go from the inside. So I'm just flipping them down to add glue. So in here we could go ahead and add glue. I'm just going to do the ones that were opposite the ones I just glued. you want to take your time, make sure they're lined up well before you flip the tab to glue to the inside right here. So that's the first one. And I'm just placing them first and then we'll all get some pressure. So you can carefully go on each side. Well that was kind of rude for a light to go out all of a sudden. So hopefully it'll stay on. I'm in a new location, so things have been changed. So I'm just adding glue to the final two tabs on the inside, and then we glue them on like that. So that's it. That's all that goes with that part. So I'm just going to do it really quick since this is not the final, but you want to take your time, line it up. And I'm doing it fairly well with the this color here. And a leaky glue bottle, too. So that's the only thing I don't like about these bottles sometimes. They get kind of uh, leaky like that and then you have to stop, wash your hands and all that fun stuff. So before adding the, uh, the brim to the hat, we want to go ahead and add this window piece and the chimney piece. So let me show you what the chimney piece looks like. There's three pieces. Make sure you get all three of them out. I'll show you in the next step how to put them together, but these three pieces are the chimney, so I'll put that together next. Um, but we want to do that before we put the brim on to this, so you can actually reach in and put it, glue it well. Okay, so let me put that aside. So we'll go ahead and we'll take this black piece. So I already told you I made uh, some of them. So this one, you can see a little, kind of a purple sheen on it, very light. Um, I used a wilted violet. So, anyways, here's the top one for the black. So we'll go ahead and we want to put it in this little square area. So to make it easier, um, I would say put the vellum inside. So we're just going to add, make sure that's the right angle there. Make sure you don't get too close to the edge, but just add glue around the edge there. Then you can place, make sure you get it in place. Gives you a little wiggle room just in case. But we don't want to get any glue on the middle there. So now that when you put a tea light in, it'll shine through that window as well. So make sure that's good and dry. And it'll be mostly covered, not all the cover, but with the insert that we put in. So now... Let me just put that over there so it doesn't mess with me, uh, my zooming here. Let's go ahead and take this piece, and you can see that they're shaped similarly. I'm just making sure these are upside down. 
So we're just going to glue that on. So just put a little glue on the brown piece and then I'm just making sure that I have it somewhat the same shape. It's not, uh, that brown piece is smaller than the purple so if you put it on wrong you can pick it up. I just made it kind of an odd shape so I put, I put it on slightly wrong here. Let's flip it around here. You shouldn't be able to see any of the brown piece. I didn't make it a uniform size so Then you can go ahead and just glue it there. So um, you could do it either way, whatever way you think it looks best for you. So that's up to you. So we'll put that on and then let me go ahead and uh, put the, the chimney. Uh, let's go ahead and make the chimney and then we'll put that on. So we add these three pieces. So we're going to go ahead and fold them. So I'll show you how, how to fold them. So you want to fold them on the scores like so. And we'll just glue this one together. There's one little tab on the side. And I decided I liked the way I did this. So it's kind of a different way, but um, it was actually by accident. Sometimes the best things for me are by accident. I like the look of what I did. I don't know if other people will, but sometimes you're excited about little things. So I'm just putting a little black ink. This is a black soot distress oxide that I had on a little distress sponge on a distress tool. Might as well get that. So now we only have those two other pieces. So this, to fold carefully, so all these little tabs fold down. Sometimes I don't show you how to fold everything. Those tabs will fold down, but they'll also fold up because we want it to glue to the inside of the hat. But let's go ahead and finish the rest of them. So we have those little tabs. And those little tabs, that side one. There's this side. So I'll show you once I'm done here. So you just want to carefully fold them all. Get it ready to assemble. The assembly is really not that bad. Then I'm going to fold it back. So I like to do train those that way and then come back as I've done on others. Just to make sure that it's they're a little pliable to fold to the inside of the hat. And then we can start on either side. There's three tabs on one side and two on the other, so we'll do the three. So we just want to glue these tabs to the inside and we're going to match those edges up to the tab folds of each tab. Just carefully. And it really isn't, as long as you're patient with yourself, it really isn't um, a little damp cloth that I usually have. It using, doesn't take much. It'll come together. It seems like it's harder than it is. And if somebody didn't want to use this, they could always do the, the house. They could use software tools to close the hole for the chimney if they didn't want it. I just think it's a fun addition. I mean, this is not, I would say this is probably intermediate 3D. I mean, I have a couple hard components, but everything's basically doable. I think everything's doable if you just do it slow enough. So we have all those glued, and you want to make sure those are good and dry before you glue these sides together. So all of a sudden, it'll just kind of go together. So you see it kind of folds around, and there's those two tabs right there. Go ahead and add glue to those two tabs. And this is where the something like the chopstick comes in handy. I'm going to line that top one up. And what I'm making sure is that the score lines match up. 
So maybe it takes a second to get there. This is the inside of the chimney. And you can reach in there or you could use the tool like that, but fortunately it's big enough at this size to get a finger in to use it at the back. And then the other one falls into place. And if they are too far apart, it's not going to fit very well into that hole. So that's the reason for that. And then the other thing we want to do here now, just these, just push them down slightly. You can push them down. And this is really not going to be seen, so it's really not that necessary, but it kind of helps to get the glue on top to attach this top piece. So we're going to go ahead and line that up best we can. If we get a little extra glue on this top piece, just try to keep it off the bottom. It's okay because it won't be seen. Really it's more of a functional piece, so I'm just sticking my finger in there to push the tabs up, the little teeny tabs. And you can put it upside down and use the table as a helper. I just detached it that way. So that's a little bit off, but not enough to make a difference. So get that on the best you can. So now what we're going to do is use the top to, I don't need this anymore so we'll get this out. We're going to add a good amount of glue on the edge of this because what we want to do is make sure we're just going to put this on. So I'm going to put the seam towards the inside which is, if you can see the bend, that's the inside. <clears throat> and Really it doesn't really matter, it's just a matter of what you think looks best. So I'm just going to stick it on there and if I have enough glue it'll attach on the outsides. If you feel like you want to use a glue gun that would be a quick way to attach it as well. Oh, my poor dry hands. Um, anyways, I think I've always told people I don't manic I don't get manicures or anything. Anyways, this this uh, all this paperwork has been really taking a toll on my cuticles and my hands. So, so what you see are dryness. I've been trying to use a lot of lotion, but the side effects of paper crafting hours and upon hours in a week. So just hold it long enough for it to dry. And then we'll go ahead and um, I'm going to attach it, let it sit there for a minute. Let's go ahead and glue on the, the frame. Gives me a second, so just go around the edge there. You could do a couple dots right here. Make sure I'm in this. Just make sure it's not enough to leak into the vellum. Then place it the way you want. It's square, so that middle piece is square. Now this is just giving me time to for the for this to dry. So next we'll put together the brim, which is really simple, and um, attach it to to this piece. But let's go ahead and get this on. So there's a little square cut out of one of the tabs. That tells you that's the you need to put it right there. So right there, that's the tab that goes right there. And that'll tell you how to place it, and then it makes it go like this. So when you here's an example one, it's gonna look different, the brim looks different, but so you can see how it angles. So, but we did refine the brim a little bit since this. See there there's the brim, the new brim. I don't know why I pulled that in there, but so let's go ahead and add glue to this little tab here with the hole in it. I'm going to push all these tabs in, see if we can get them in. We may not be able to, let's just do the first one here. And then, we'll, then we'll gently put them in there. So we're going to line it up 
the inside tab fold to that bottom edge. I'm making little minor adjustments as I do it and I'm just going to hold it in place. And as I do that I can just kind of squish those tabs in and push them in. So we'll glue the rest on the inside. So what, what I like to do with anything polygonal, as you'll see over and over again, I'm going to glue the opposite tab first to get it kind of centered and anchored. So I added glue to that back one. I want to make sure it's in place. So again, I'm just checking on this side. Kind of gently push it down until that edge gets into the tab fold. And then I'm just holding the tab in place in there. And then the rest should be fairly simple. Just uh, add a little glue to all these tabs and we'll fold them back and attach it to the inside. And there it is, the top of it. So now we need to add this. Now, since I told you that I'm not going to show you anything assembled in black, we're going to do it in that vanilla color. So the only difference is you won't have that and that. But it shows you. We're going to demonstrate. So we have that piece, and then let's get the brim pieces. So let's put that aside for a minute. And we have these two these two rounded pieces. So I went from um, an interesting thing where I went from this, then I recalled that I can make it cleaner and rounder uh, this way. So we, I changed to that. So sometimes these these uh, designs take refining. Even though I've done similar ones in the past, it's sometimes I forget. So let's fold those down and you're going to want to fold those up as well. So train them down first. Do not fold these, there's just little cut marks to help you guide how to glue them together. So I always do the mountain fold and then the valley fold because that's going to glue on to that other piece that we put the chimney on, the top piece. So all these, if you get a good fold coming down like that, it'll be easier to fold backwards. Just get it as precise as possible. Okay, so I kind of um, was kind of trying to curl it, but it'll naturally curl when we, we glue it together. So we have little two little cut lines there. Probably, hopefully it shows in the video well. But those are just lines to line this up. So you want to line it up to it, not over it, just up to it. Okay. So we're going to add glue to the right of these cut lines. I'm going to go ahead and line that up. I'm making sure this is kind of this edge, but I'm making sure I don't go beyond that cut line. I don't care if I see just a smidgen of it. And that will help it stay more round. And not like bolt buckle there. So we'll do the other one. So it's going to kind of curve around, it's going to kind of get a curve, uh, see how it goes like that? That's what's going to happen. So you want to do the same thing on this side. Get as close as possible without going over because you don't want to go over else this won't glue very well to that top part. And then you might want to let it sit for just a minute or so just to make sure that it uh, dries well. So now we're going to go ahead and attach the brim. So this is what it looks like on the black hat together. So as you can see, we just glue them on, on each on the inside of that top piece. 
So we're going to go ahead and show you on the vanilla piece. So just know that the difference is, is that on the vanilla piece, I don't, I don't have these filled, but those will be filled. So you have to work around those two pieces. So here we go. So what I would suggest is make sure these are good and folded to help you. And I'll start with one. Pick what you want it to be the front. So let's say that's the front. I'm going to start with that one next to the one of the seams. And that piece right here, this one to the left of the opening, that will be the first one I glue. So I'm going to anchor that. So you want to get it as flush as possible to that brim piece in, in the fold. And once you do, you need to just add pressure. So I'm using my fingers inside and fingers on the outside to attach that. There's no easy way to put it on the table for this. So you want to make sure this is your anchored part. This is the very first one you want to get as right as possible. So you can see that's how it's glued. So we're going to go ahead and glue the opposite one. So I can either do it from the front or the bottom like that. I just folded it down temporarily. You don't want to fold it so much that it's not going to hold, obviously. We don't want to tear off the tab. So try to get a good coverage on the glue too. That's going to help you if you get toward the edges, but not too much that's going to leap too much. Remember, you don't want, this is typically black, so you don't want the glue to show through because we don't have panels on the brim. So now that we have that, um, it's discolored because I got it a little bit wet, but that, that, this is just for demonstration period purposes. So now, get that second one in place. Trying to push it up just to get minimize that gap right there. There's a little gap, but once you can kind of get it in place, lightly place it and then you can apply more pressure. So make sure you get it in place first before you apply more pressure. Then you go ahead and we just glue the rest of them. So the way you can do it, these are the ones you want to be the most careful with, the front two. I mean, you want to be careful with all of them. But I'm going to go ahead and add glue to these. So again, I'm getting pretty close to the, the tab fold so I get good coverage. And you're going to have a, uh, a window already put in there and also the chimney. So you're going to have to glue over like the edges of the tabs. Well, the vellum on that one and the tabs on this. So, so it may take a little bit longer to hold. So if I did this one, again, my, my point is just to get it in place. I'm trying to get that bottom flush with the tab fold, inside fold. Same thing, I'm kind of pushing down. Now you want to push down from the top a little bit. Be careful because you don't want to crush that. And then you can apply more pressure. So you're going to do the same with the other two sides. I just dripped some water there, that's all you're seeing there. So this is just, like I said, demonstration period purpose only. And then of course these last two. So you just glue those last two in and then you come to look in like something like this and this is what it looks like inside so next we're going to add the insert we're going to show you how to put together the insert um, and then show you how to glue it in so this is the insert so what the, this will do is to allow it to go inside the house part to keep it in place. And then the brim will kind of sit on top of the house. So we have this big cutout on the side right here. So this big cutout will go in where the window is so it doesn't obstruct the light. So we're just going to put this together and then we'll glue it in. So let's get the pieces for that, and that's these two pieces. So that's this. 
So you want to fold it like this. So you there's little tabs here on the side. And then there's tabs. You can see it folds down like that. And there's tabs on the side here. So it doesn't matter which one you start with. But you can just do one piece at a time. It really doesn't matter. It's pretty fairly straightforward on this one. You just add glue to that side path. And I'm starting with the one with the opening. So we're just lining this up, this edge to the tab pole. Once we get this done, we just glue it to the inside. But we had to get the chimney and the door in first. So I did that, I glued that top piece, continued, and then that little tab on the bottom there. Just kind of started doing it without thinking anybody was watching. So we're just lining it up. So you do that top piece first and then this bottom piece. And then we'll continue gluing these tabs all the way around. And it'll fit in to the hat to make a little the inside piece to go into the house and then um, the rest of it will be held up on the house with uh, with this so with the brim but this just makes it so it doesn't uh, go wobble when it's in there and also wanted to cover some of this stuff that we did with the chimney, so this is kind of twofold, but it's an odd shape. So it's not uniform, this part, because of the shape of the hat. But that's okay, we have that opening that tells us exactly how to put it in because of the window. Okay, so that's how you put that together. Here's the finished one right here in black. We'll just go ahead and slide it. See the opening right there? That's where this opening's gonna go. So you wanna slide it in there and glue it in. So we'll just go ahead and add, I don't wanna get too close to the window there because I don't wanna get glue on the, um, vellum. So you don't have to go all the way down. You don't wanna go too far down because you may just angle it weird and but you want to do your best to get it in there it should be pretty snug a little too far down I don't want to there so all we want to do is really get this set in place so make sure you have it oriented to know where your window is right there so let me turn it around so like that so I have this part I'm going to start there. I'm just going to carefully place it in. And all we're really trying to do is make sure we don't overlap that window in there. So I want to make sure it's in place and then I can go around and add pressure. So you just want to go around, make sure you get it in place, and now it'll fit into the top of the house. So now we're going to put together the, the base of the house and the stairs. So I kind of zoomed out a little bit because as it gets bigger, it's going to be hard to see, except if it's zoomed all the way out. And I was playing with my... Um, purple. That's a good way if you're trying to ink something and um, either get a spare piece of paper um, 
you know, black, like I said, I wanted to see how this purple looked, ink looked on the actual black. So I did it here because I knew that the house was going to glue right there. So that's the top. So we're going to put this together. And this is like this. this. This is for the stairs so you can place the stairs. So that's the reason that's there. So that's the ones I already did. Let's go ahead and put it together. So let's do the stairs first. I'm just going to pull that out. It's this piece right here. So what you want to do is go ahead and fold it. And I'm going to show you how to fold it. So here's the tabs here. I'm going to fold those all the way down. But be helpful if you fold these first. So I'm going to fold these all mountain folds first. But this is the back. And this is the front. So you need one. So they're those are the mountain folds. Here's one valley fold that we need to get that stair step down. So you can see like that. So fold it in that manner. Just making sure that we have all the other tabs fold, folded. So you want to start with these two. So it's on one side, fold these two down, these little ones. Let's see if I can show you. I'm zoomed out just a little bit, so let's zoom in. So I'm adding glue to these two tabs. And then we're just going to start folding this over. I'm going to line this top one, this top edge to the tap fold, then push it in a little bit to make sure that that fold lands where it should and this lines up with that side. So I'll show you the inside. I gotta hold it for a second. I'll show you what it looks like on that back. So this is just folding and the side is gluing on it. That's what it looks like. So we do the same thing on the other side. And you can do it pretty fast, I mean it, so we can go ahead and add glue to these two tabs. So this is fold, folds right over and we're going to line this up with that edge and adjust this edge. You can do it all at once. But even if you just get it in the place and then hold it. So I'm just kind of nudging it so that folded area gets right there. And that corner sits in that. You can see. And I'm just applying pressure to those tabs on the inside. And then these last ones will just glue like this in the inside. So we'll do those really quick. So once you get those first two in place, it becomes easier. I don't want to do all three at once. You can if you want, but you might want to practice it. Do it. I'm just not that fast and I tend to make mistakes, so because I know me, I don't do that. Just making sure I have enough glue on it. It doesn't take much. And hold it for a moment. So you can see that's what it looks like on the inside. And then these two tabs will glue on the inside here. Just lining that tab fold up to that edge. You, again, you can use your finger to make sure that it's lined up properly. You can feel it. You can see it too. And then you can fold those. And don't fold them in too far because we need it to kind of attach because we're just going to glue this on. And remember I'm just doing this in off-white so you can see it better that rather than showing you the assembly in black. 
course, you may want to change the colors altogether, which is fine with me. I mean, that's the whole fun of having these files. So I just kind of folded it over and I'm lining it up with my fingertips, get it in place, then rub on the tab a little bit, and then this is always helpful too, doing that, to get it set in place. And for the final one, I did a little inking around the edges and that kind of thing, just with that little purple. Because we have this, I'll show you the, I might as well put this on now. I embossed this with the little boo. It's an old color bug um, Halloween embossing folder. And I found boo on one, and I just, that's going to be the uh, placemat. So we'll just go ahead and glue that on right now. Then we'll be done with the the stairs. So we have all the pieces for the base. Um, so here are the pieces. So that's what it'll look like when it's finished. Let me go ahead and put that over there. So we have these pieces, and we'll want to fold them like this. Fold all the tabs up and then sideways like that. Here's the other side. So if you have them flat like this, one of the tips that I have to fold is just put it against the table and feel for the where it's the score is and then fold it that way. So just like that. So this is fairly simple to put together. There's only it's easy to know which tabs to glue together. So we'll take one of these small tabs and I do like to pre-fold them before I glue them together but I'm going to make that flat so they can easily glue this on. I'm just going to line up this edge right here to the tab fold making sure not to go over so that's what it looks like on the inside not that you're going to see that. And this base I made uh, thin enough so you wouldn't really need a support. Um, hopefully people think that, but rather than have an extra box support in underneath. And then we'll glue this other side right here. So we can go, I'm going to go flat here. Unfortunately it's not easy to do it flat like that so you have to kind of lift it up. Got to get to the center here. Let me move that. And then I'm just lining up that edge. Getting the excess glue. Have that wet paper towel to help me. And try not to get glue on the edge. You can make this base a different color. I just for simplicity of the amount of colors on this, um, I used to have this a different color. But I felt like there's almost two color, too many colors. I think there's nine different co um, paper colors in this design, and um, I know how challenging it is to pick paper, so I kind of simplified it a bit. But of course, people that know their machines know they can change any color of any piece for the most part. So, and if you always ever had trouble, I can help you with that. So you'll notice that there's a little cutout um, ellipse and a square. So one of these is smaller than the other. So this is going to go on the bottom because of that. So we'll do that second, or last I should say. Um, this one will line up to that. But it's going to be easier to glue it on the inside. And um, since this is the top, and this is where the house will go, I mean, it's up to you. If you feel comfortable and you're advanced enough and you're okay, you can go ahead and glue it on the top. But I'm going to show you glue it in on the inside. So we'll go ahead and fold this back a little bit. I'm going to add glue to this. And since I'm using American Craft Textured, one side is not textured. So that's the side I'm going to glue. So it's going to glue on the inside. So you see that's the non-textured side going to line it up. You can line it up with the ellipse, but you just might have to just make sure that you're in the fold though. So I'm just making sure that it's lined up by pulling that edge up. 
and I can make sure I get it good and anchored. I'm just going to pull all these up so I can get it gently inside. Did I say gently? <laughs> So now we're just going to add glue to the rest of these. So let me start by doing the one opposite. Just get it in place so there's no wiggle room. So I'm going to fold that up. Then again, I'm just kind of getting it in place here. So you could go around it and do it. This is really not that, this particular piece is not as critical. I just wanted a base because of, of the way that I wanted to do the stairs and give it something to sit on. So I'm just flipping it over, getting those other two. I'll do two at a time. I'm just kind of fold them down and then you can push the sides in a little bit as you're gluing them. And then I'll just really put pressure on it. So where those cutouts are, I just forgot to mention that is, I may have mentioned it, I just dropped something here. Um, that's the front. So this is not uniformly shaped because I made the house a little bit different than it's not not every side is the same size so that's it's important to know which one was which side was the front and that's the reason why we have those cutouts. So that's all glued on. So here's the top piece. So we do have to glue it on top. So make sure those are good and folded well. So it's kind of angled. So this will glue right here. So I'm doing that. I just flipped it over so the textured side's on top. That'll glue like that. So there's two ways. I think the easiest way is to glue this opposite tab, get that anchored here, and then flip it over. So we'll do that. You can try to glue this side but you have this flap to deal with so I think the opposite side would be best. Just make sure you get it in the correct um, location so you know which side to glue first. So we're just going to glue that first. So again we're just anchoring it. And this will finish the the black parts pieces. So I'm just lining this edge up. Just make sure you have the, the correct orientation of the piece. So that should be at the top. And then you can flip it over and apply pressure that way. So the rest of it we're just going to add glue to the tabs. And line it up. So you're just going to add glue and then line it up to the edges. So this one's kind of a weird. So if you have something lifting like that, it's just I didn't glue well enough that side tab. So let me fix that. So if you have something like that happening, just check your side tabs again. So I put glue on all the tabs here. And I'm going to fold this down carefully. I'll start at the last two. I'm going to get a little glue on my fingertips here. So I'm just lining this up. Trying to get glue on the project. And then you'll see that this should... We're going to just make sure that lines up, that square. So you just want to rub the edges. 
to get it as flush, flush as possible. And you want to do it as long as you want. You don't want to push too hard because you don't want to push and dent it in. But this is the bottom, so it doesn't have to be perfect per se. But do as long as you need to. Make sure you get that front piece. Then you can go ahead and do that. That'll help you additionally. So that's going to finish up the black pieces. So this is, so we talked about this before, but that's where this, um, that's the place for the stairs. I just lose my mind. So here's the black piece. And again, again, you see that right here on the top. You won't see that because the house will be on top of it. But that indicates front of the house, makes it really easy because of the shape is slightly different. You can kind of see the angles are a little bit different. So here are the sides of the actual house. So we're going to want to take this, these, and just fold them on the tabs. So you can see I folded. And there's also a, cut, a number we'll cut out on the bottom. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So make, make sure you put them in order. Actually, it won't matter for now. We want to work on, we're going to do, actually do something to the front. And we'll use this later because we don't want to put that on until we put panels and all that fun stuff. So I'm going to put that to the side. So these are the sides. Just make sure you go ahead and fold them. So this front one has no folds right here, only a fold up here and then all the tabs on the side. And all the rest, other than the ones with the windows, have are just fold like this. So you just fold them. It helps to pre-fold and it will be ready when we put them together. So for now I'm taking number two out. So I'm going to put those aside. That's the front and we want to put the door in because the door is inset and we don't want anything to interfere with what we're doing. So this is going to curve So that's going to curve around, it's going to go on the inside, like this. So it's going to just be inset. And we'll use one of these doors and put the tabs around it. And this will cover the tabs on the back side. So we'll just put one of them aside, they're the same size, back and forward. So we're going to put, once we get all those tabs on, we'll put that on the back after we get some vellum on there, because we have some vellum to add. Um, actually, we're going to put the vellum on the, um, on the front, so I'll show you. I forgot I made that decision to make that change. So, it's just hard to glue on tabs. So let's go ahead and you can always train it a little bit first, like that. And then fold these down naturally. I'm going to do the same on the other side. So regardless, one side is going to be a valley fold and one's going to be a mountain fold. That means one of these, the tab is going to go backwards. And how you'll know is this. So here's the, the textured side. So I kind of made it go that way. I should have went this way. If you want the textured on the inside, if you have textured paper, I just went the wrong, I curved it the wrong way. So this is all on the inside, so you'll see the texture on the inside. So we need to fold that tab backwards. So when we put on, so we'll see, how, so that's the texture right there. So I have to kind of go slow on this because this is a little bit more complicated. So we're going to add glue to the texture side of this tab down here. If you don't have textured paper, then you don't have to worry about this part. You just make sure you pay attention to how things are folded. I'm just going to go line that up. So I'm lining it up. Don't go over over the tab fold. Just go up to the tab fold with that edge. This is actually the hole is a little bit slightly larger just in case somebody goes too close. But it's a good enough fit. So all this square piece will glue to the front. So naturally, this will glue like this on the front. 
but we're going to attach it to the door first. So for the door, as you can see, we're going to have to fold it the other way. So you want to get them nice and folded over. So remember, the one with the angle tab is going to go onto the, the door piece. This piece right here. So we're just getting them all folded down with the opposite. It's harder to fold because uh, it naturally it goes the other way. So take your time to do this. I mean, I realize I'm probably going a little bit faster than I should because um, a lot of people just don't want to watch me folding. So now we're just going to add glue and glue it in. So the easiest way I found is to start with this larger tab. We're going to make sure that the textured side is up because this will be facing out and not much will be seen, just a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and center it on that tab. Make sure that edge gets into the tab full. So it's how it is right now, it's just attached on the bottom. The best way, in my opinion, at this point, there's two ways you can do this. You can add glue around the edge, like this. I'm not, not I'm sorry, wrong one side. Around the edge right here, and fold those down to attach or add glue to each of the individual tabs. So I'll show you the method of adding the glue to the door itself. So we don't really care whether there's excess glue. This, this would be the fastest method. I'm not saying it's the best method, but if you want it to be more accurate, you could do, put glue on each of the tabs and fold them back down. So we're going about what, halfway? We can do it all at once. This, this requires less precision, but remember we have a, a panel going on the back. So the only thing that's a bit big issue for this is uh, you're going to get glue probably on your table. So you'll want to wash it after that. So if you go ahead and you start from the bottom. Let me angle it here. And I'm pushing it in as I go up. just following it around. You just have to make sure you put enough that your glue doesn't dry before you get to the other side. So this is the, I would say the easiest way, the more, more precise way, like I said before, is to add glue to each of the individual tabs. And the only real huge drawback in my opinion is maybe a couple tabs might come up and you get glue on your table. So make sure that you don't have excess glue where you don't want it to touch the rest of yours. So if you do have some coming up, you can go ahead and press them like that. So the way this is going to go, that's gonna go over there. But to show you the other pieces, so you understand how that vellum's gonna go, let me get it. This is the front house piece, and that will just, oh, that, that is the one they want. I did make some slight modifications to this file. So the way it'll go, just to give you an indication, so we are going to put it on the back like that. So it shines through like that, and then we will have this will glue in there. So we can do that all at once so it's easier than doing it after the fact. So let's go ahead and add this to here. So I did make some slight changes to the file to make it again simplifying the colors. So I'm putting this on the non-textured side. That's the vellum that'll shine through. 
I got really close. You gotta be careful with that glue, but I got it almost leaked through. It's just on the edge of leaking through to the front, which I don't want it to be do. So let me let it just seeing if I can get to it. It's just right on the edge there. I'm just gonna let that dry for a minute. And then on the front, you can take this piece, move that, we don't need that. So we need that, the door piece, the frame, and then this little panel. Again, you can change the panel colors. I just minimized the color, amount of color. So if somebody wants to go crazy with pattern paper everywhere, they obviously can. And this is slightly smaller, so you don't see it on the edge. This will go in here. So we can add glue to the back of this. Very light glue around these opening areas. And actually it's okay right now because we don't have the vellum down. If you have the vellum already glued in, then you gotta be careful about getting, let's see. So that's a little bit bigger than it needs to be, but it'll give you an enough so you don't see the edge. And then we can go ahead. I accidentally glue, added glue to these prematurely. And then we'll just go ahead and add glue here to add this back piece. So you want to get it on pretty snugly there. So once we get it there, so that just hides. If somebody goes and looks on the inside, it actually serves two purposes um, for the vellum. And to hide the tabs on the inside. So you really want to get it nice, get that nice and tight. And I added a little glue to the middle of the frame so it would sit flush on that vellum. So that's that. So now we just have to put it in. And you can see why we're doing this before we put everything together. So we can go ahead and slide that in like this. Actually, that's not going to work very well that way. It gets a little thicker every time you add something, so let's go from the bottom. It does fit. I put this together so many times, it's not even funny at this point. Uh, that's what takes the longest with these, all the test cuts and assemblies. So let's go ahead and add glue on this tab. We'll anchor it to the front. Probably like making it look way more awkward than it is because it really isn't that bad. Just pushing those in a little bit because they're getting in my way. Make sure that that edge is flush up to the fold back there. Nice and secure. So we'll go ahead once that sets. So we're going to gently guide the tabs through the front. So it may seem a little tight, it's just the awkwardness of this particular, it's very precise, it's one of those things that, so once you get it through like that, you see how it's kind of through, we can go ahead and we'll be gluing it like this. So I'm just barely pushing them because I already trained them a little bit, and we're going to add glue to the tabs. So I'm just opening up. My glue bottle here. So this one you could do the same technique. This is the one I'm very pretty I'm pretty fast with this. There's another panel that's going on here. So we'll do the best we can. It's it's always 
best if you can get all the tabs at once, but if you want to do partial, you can. But it'll fit the best. If you need to do any wiggle, you have more wiggle room if you do them all at once. But if you're new, just do half of them. Or if you want to, you just kind of go over and just make sure nothing's drying. So that's another reason I like our glitter glue. So I'm just going around where I started now. Yes, I'm going to get glue on my fingertips a little bit, so I'm just being careful. Fortunately, I have a panel that be covering these. And if you want to, you can flip it over once you get them all and just do this. So this is the reason why we do this first, because you couldn't do this if it was already assembled. So you really want to make sure those are good and attached. And we have this cute little insect door now. So I just I just like that look. Um, I have my door's a little crooked though. So I'll probably add a little, um, what, what which is, do door's not crooked, right? <laughs> but you could, I could have straightened that out a little bit more. The appeal of having a, a fun Halloween door though. So now we can go ahead and start putting these together. Um, one thing you might want to put on though, the one thing, could be this, but we'll do it after. And the reason I say now because we have a, another panel um, to put on. So just a little side note. I, I just want everybody to understand this particular there there's something that's going to attach this the porch so let me show you in its pretty raw version and why I'm showing you is is the pitfalls of doing what I did the first time so I thought it was cute so you can see it's that's coming apart and, and this was just a test but what I did is I put um, I embossed the panels which is fun and people might want to do that but on the front, the pitfalls are, you need to glue this piece on. So let me show you. So if you, it's going to be harder to glue if it's got embossed, if it's embossed. So a flatter paper, a pattern paper might be better. But if you do want to do it, just know that it's going to take more pressure to hold it until it's glued. So this is, this is slightly different. There's a couple little differences in this version. Um, I did a couple versions, but this one was the closest to my last before I fine-tuned it. So, so that's what we'll end up doing is putting this on top. But we'll do that at the afterwards so we don't get any glue on top. So we'll start, make sure they're numbered. So that's two. So start with num, number one. And then the rest of them are in order. Three, four, five, six. So I'll have one. And then we'll say two, three. So this is similar to if anybody's used to putting just circular items together. Oops, I did the wrong one first. Blooper. We're not going to cut that out. I'm going to start with one. So make sure you have one and it's cut out right there. I just put a pen mark so you can see it better. So, so let's make sure it's folded and we're going to start with this number one tab up here. We're going to use this to anchor. So we're going to line this up. That one wasn't folded. So you want to line this up with the edge on top and then we want this edge to line up with that tab fold. So this will anchor it. So we don't have to. I'm going to make sure it's in place before we do the rest of them. And then for this one, it's it's straight. Even though it's, I know you see the score lines, but it makes it easier to have um, for the other side. For this side, the rest of these go down straight. So it's really not that difficult. You just want to go from top to bottom. If you want to stop and start at the bottom, that's up to you. I mean, you can always give that a try and see if that's better for you. 
Um, I just kind of go over there. I always go slow the first one to show people that are not familiar with this. Just kind of lining up each tab fold to the edge and putting my thumb there, finger or thumb, so you know that it's lined up pretty well and it's not just jutting up past that fold. And if you're familiar with this um, procedure, of course, you could just forward ahead and do the rest of them. Because your just biggest thing for this is that the sides are not the same size, so that's why the number's on here. Kind of made it a wide pumpkin, a pumpkin house-ish. It was different. I just wanted something different. I usually do very symmetrical, and um, every once in a while I like to change it up. So now we'll do the second one. And I'll talk through the second one just for uh, the sake of anybody new, and then the rest of them I'll just show without uh, me talking. So again, I'm anchoring that first one. And it does get a little different when you have an angle on it. So it's the same thing, but with the score lines it helps to put it together. So you can put them, if you wanted to just do a couple, you could. And for this particular one, I wouldn't be too worried if you get a little glue on the front because we're going to put panels. I mean, if you don't want the panels, of course, you want to be careful because if the glue leaks through, you'll be able to see it. So keep on going down. So this, this was just a fun one that I been wanting to do for a couple years actually. It just takes a lot of time to fine tune the fitting. And I'm sure it's, it, I know it's not perfect, it's just redo the best we can to get it as close as possible. Every, every part here is pretty engineered, trying to make it easy for you. And you can flip it over like that and add pressure. So we'll continue putting these on, just make sure they're in order, four, five, six, and then I'll show you, I'll come back when I'm starting to close it up. So closing it up can be a bit of a challenge. You can start with the top one. It's always the most challenging piece of part of uh, doing anything kind of circular. You can see that I was being careful to make sure I covered the tabs well. But I'm still going to try to anchor this first one. Because of the odd shape, this is 
actually a little bit easier to get to tabs once I get the first one in. So I would do, continue to do the same thing. Like a lot of times I'll do all the tabs at once. I'll add glue to all the tabs at once. Because this is quite large, and the reason for the size of this is actually twofold. It's it's more of a statement and can be like a centerpiece or for something Halloween or maybe uh, for your trick-or-treating or something like that. Or um, I realize this is when this is coming out, it's a little bit late in the season, so not many people will probably make it. But um, some of the other pieces are quite small, like the chimney, so we have to kind of balance size to make sure it's not too hard to to make. So you can see I'm just kind of lift, feeling in, still lining them up. My fingers look like they have glue on them, but they're they're just dry as all get out from a lot of washing. Lotion and paper crafting are not my friends, even though I can put it I can put it on, but within probably about 20 minutes, um, my fingers look the same. So after I'm done, so just make sure you go through, make sure it's good and closed. So now you can see the shape. It's kind of an odd shape. Making sure that this focus is okay. Um, you can see it kind of wide on the outside because I kind of wanted the windows to show and then the back. So we have some panels to add to it. Um, but before we do that, we're going to get that front porch prepped. It's not going to go on before the panels, but it'll give it time to dry a little bit. So let's get that piece. So now you can see it's coming along. So um, it's starting to look like a house. So that's where the lid just kind of slides in. So let's get this uh, porch part started. So we can let that dry a little bit. So we'll put that aside again. So we need this piece. Um, this is the roof piece. I've already been bossed it and inked it a little bit. That's that's going to go right here once this is together. And I'm missing a piece, so let me get that. These two pieces. So these will go to the side. So you can emboss them if you wanted to. Um, I just had a printed paper that just trying to keep the orange and purple theme for me for this house. Um, I think it would look cute in black actually. So uh, with a black body. For this, this piece, this is going to wrap around this. So similar to how we did the door, this is going to wrap around and glue to the back to create a little enclosed porch. So the things that we want to do is probably just kind of rub that a little bit to get it curled to start. That very bottom piece without the tabs will be just uh, glued onto the side of the stairs. So fold it, fold all the tabs, and you can pre-fold them. Just pull them down like that. And for this one I'm making sure that the it depends on what you want, but I put the textured side on the outside. So if you didn't have a double-sided, this is best with a double-sided color, a solid core um, paper. So because we want the color on both sides, on the inside as well. So if you wanted to make it easy, you could do the insides first. You could put these on first and just center them. But you want to make sure they're curved. So we can put them on first, and I'll show you both ways, how about that. So if you do put those on first, I'm just going to put two of the panels on. Just don't put like heavy glue because glue, once it dries, it's hard to maneuver. So you see I pre-curled it for the inside. And this is actually not American Craft cardstock, just so you know this purple. Um, I really like the Cricut purple, so this is the Cricut purple. So that's the inside. And we'll do, so we're only doing one side. And then this one, I'm kind of going to just curl this way. So I can put it on the out, same outside. So it is easier to put it on before. I just don't want to put a lot of glue because that glue, once it dries, is not as 
I'm maneuverable. But I'm going to show you it's easier to put it on first. So I like to show different methods because different people are different in what they do. So I would start with one of these tabs, make sure everything's folded well, making sure the texture's up on this. I'm just going to line up this side to this tab and it's going to just glue underneath. So I'm just getting this lined up to the inside tab fold, similar to how we did the front door, and anchoring it on, you can see like that. It's just going to going to, uh, we're going to add glue to the rest of it. You can do just glue back here like we did on the door where you can do the individual tabs. For time's sake, usually I just do the, um, I just put glue on the top, back, but this is actually how I prefer. And because it, it gets easier with time to add just a couple dots of glue to each tab, it's really not that bad. So we're just going to go around the edge here. I'm going to start at the top. I'm getting, and be careful with the glue because you don't really want it to show through. So it's not going to go all the way to the bottom. So you're going to start at the top, and I'm pushing in from the sides to get this edge into the tab folds. So there. There that is. By the way, nothing's ever perfect, so one thing that I um, will note to you, so I'm going to do this other side. I'm just going to do that tab first, I'm trying to clear out that extra glue. You'll notice that inside panel goes, it's going to be glued, you won't be able to see that bottom edge. You could shorten it if you wanted to, but you know, I have to make a design decision at one point, and you'll see because I'm gluing that against the uh, side of the stairs. So there's there's room for changes here if if you're really good at making file changes, which a lot of people are. They make it their own. So I'm going to fold it up. Do the same thing on this side. Kind of pushing this in at the same time I'm pushing it under. Make sure you can see it, hopefully. But we always want to start at the top going down. So the biggest piece to anchor to, and then have this go down so it's adjusted as it goes down. And then this is what it looks like on the back. So that will, once we put the front panel there, that'll go right there. Okay. So we want to make sure that's good and... So we're doing this early so it can dry. So here's if you put the panel on afterwards. And you know what would be cute is if you put some, like a little character inside or something like that. Originally I was going to add a cat, but it just didn't didn't work out very well. The cat was just too small for this design. See, so I didn't center that. So it's it's possible. I didn't put that on as well as I wanted to. So unless it's cardstock, you could theoretically put this on first. I mean, this is this is a light cardstock that I'm using, but if it's a heavy cardstock, it's going to be hard to bend. But you can train it. If you put it on first, see if I do better here. It's, and it's hard to to figure out placement too. And the other reason why I actually did put, didn't put as much color to, to this is that it was hard pick choosing all the colors. So kind of what I did is I picked this, this paper. I picked this paper and 
I started just choosing colors based on that. So the, the purple goes really well with it, that kind of thing. So this will go around the edge here. So that opening, just to create like kind of a frame in the front. So, so hopefully I won't drop this. I'm notorious for dropping things. See if I can get it lined up. I know I will, but You may have to scooch it around, make sure it's lined up. And for some reason, if you have that back color showing through, what you can always do is get something like some ink. This is where ink comes in handy again. And I just put a little brown, it kind of looks black, but you can always do that. I'm using this Distress Oxide. It's hard to get in the corners, but you could use, uh, you could, t I know some people use the, they just take this off the dispenser and do it. Whatever you use for inking, it just doesn't work very well in corners. You just have to get used to it. But if I put it on my hands, I get ink all over my hands, so I really miss the Talking. So this is this has a little bit of black on it, which is okay actually. So and then it kind of hides those edges if you have an issue like that, and it kind of gives it a dis distressed look, which is why I like inking actually. So make sure always keep your bottle clean and best you can. I have that damp cloth and I kind of fold it over, and then this will just go on top. So just go ahead and add glue to this. Do it to the actual top of the roof because the roof itself is bigger. Overlaps. So you want to line up the back of this to the, so put it where the fold is and then line up the back. Not quite to it because you don't want it to hinder you putting it on the house. So this overlaps a little bit on the front. Well, you want it to line up on the front, really. It's exact size, but what happens when you emboss it, it kind of changes things. I'm folding. So there's the front porch that will go on. So that'll just go right here. Oh, the other thing we'll do here, just to make, be consistent, is we'll add a little ink here. So if you don't get it on exactly right, first of all we're giving a little distressing look. So this is just a distress tool, but you could there's so many tools out there you can use. But I'm just getting ink around the these tab edge corners, I mean, edges. Am I saying the right thing? So when you put it on it's not as noticeable if one shows through. Because I know that, so that's the magic of inking if you don't use it currently. You don't need to use the fancy Distress Oxide too. You can use cheap stuff. You just need to practice um, with it first. So once we get that panel on, you see how it's going to go right there? And that's why I hazard against putting anything kind of uh, embossed or anything. So now we'll work on the panels. Well, actually, let's really quick. Let's put these together. I I lied. We have these two windows. I have a little dry glue here. So they're just. I'm just making sure that they're they're textured side up. They're opposite. As you can see, they go opposite. So all you have to do is. Add glue to the edge, and these are slightly smaller than the purple frames. I'll do them both at once. 
Hold on. Just be careful. You can get close to the edge. Fortunately, we don't have vellum or anything that we're dealing with right now. Originally, I added vellum to this, but I decided that it could cause more pain than good. So this inside edge just needs to be lined up to the inside edge of the brown piece. So just put it on lightly and then maneuver it around until it matches up. So until that lines up, this inside lines up. I got a little glue on my hands touching this one. Same thing. Just put it lightly on. I always start at the bottom. It seems to help me. But then I pick it up and I can do this. This is one of the reasons why I changed how the vellum goes on because it's much easier to put it on the way that I'm going to do it this way. I tried it a couple ways and I don't know. I've done a couple houses but for some reason I always struggle with the vellum placement. And you don't have to put vellum too. If you can just have no background, that's up to you. So I know this is an awkward angle, but I want to show you how I curl these. So this one doesn't need, we have these showing. So this is going to be the left window. So make sure you have the, them in order, and I'll show you in a minute. But that's going to be the left window. But we want to curl them a little bit. So the only one that doesn't need to be curled that much is this front one. We just need to curl the top so we can do that with our finger. But a good way, and I've already curled this one, that's the the right, and I'll show you how to put them in order. But the one way to do it, and what people might like, is just kind of rub it around the edge of a table lightly. So it gets it trained. It's hard for me to do it on uh, film, so I wanted to try to show you. So you can see, and this, it, excuse the table, it looks like it's dirty, but it's just stained. So it kind of gets a curl. So you can use the edge of the table to do that. So you want to continue doing the rest of them. Just slowly. I mean, if you have other methods of doing it, this is just one way of doing it. You could use a big dowel. I tend to do this too. And it works for me most of the time. You just have to be careful. Works better for light cardstock and paper for me. So it's up to you how you want to do it, but you want to curl them all. So we're getting close to being done. We have a we do have a couple more steps of assembly, but really it's just the panels, uh, some windows, putting on the base, stairs, some final things. So um, I'll show you how to put these in order. So go ahead and you kind of want to pick it up, make sure it's in order. So that's that one. So and this is the front. That's easy. And the next one is the next window. So you see how I'm just I'll put them upside down. And the next one, you want to make sure you have in the right order. So these aren't, so if I'm going from left to right, this one is going to bulge out on the left. So that's the next one. This one is pretty straight down. It doesn't, it's just straight, it's the back. And this one bulges out and make sure we have the correct one. That's, that doesn't look right. Hold on. I did that one wrong. See, that one was the last one. Okay, so put that aside, and this one fits on back. So you want to just dry fit them, make sure you have the correct panels, since they're all differently shaped. So we do, we have left window, door, um, right window, then the, that's the back, and then the last one. Okay. So the way we want to do this is to go ahead and we'll start with this. But before we put that on, I've decided that it's easier to put the, the um, vellum on before. So you just want to lightly, I just made it square, 
rather than mess with shaping it. I originally did, but these big pieces, you just put it around there. And if you wanted to, you could just put dab a little bit. And this is kind of a weird vellum. It's not, it's just something I had in my stock that kind of had a yellowish sheen to it. But it's the reason why I used it. And why I'm doing this is that when we put on the final, this is easier to match it up. So you see it's over the hole. But when we put the final frame, window frame on, it'll be easier for you to match it up there. So just like we did before, you might want to ink the insides of this prior, just in case it shows through. Since I, I actually, um, this is a digital paper, so I cut it out with. It's not really heavy cardstock, like 65 pound maybe I think. Um, but then you can. So when you put it on, you can't see those white edges on the inside. So it's just the little things that make a difference. Because if you're going to make this for decoration or a gift or something like that, um, that's the nice part. It's just to have it, these little finishing touches. I know they don't seem like much, but they are. So I'm just do that last one. So if you um, do like this video, this project, I always ask if you could give me a little like below and or subscribe to our channel. And if you do subscribe, you'll be notified of new videos, new projects, that kind of thing. As I get started again. Okay, so that's done. So make sure they're in order again. So we'll add the other vellum. this I'll just go a little wider on that Let's see how that goes there we go so you just want to make sure the glue is not close to the opening so it doesn't get glue on the the middle part of the where the light will shine through you can always make this I may kind of thought of this as a luminary but you can always and a decoration, but you could always add a little gift inside too if you wanted to. And we're not putting the bottom on yet because it'll help us attach these panels. That's the, the whole reason. So let's go ahead and start with this one. Again, do not mix these up. Put Keep them in order. Otherwise you'll be like me because I do this all the time where all of a sudden in the middle of something I'll We'll have to start over. So I'm just going to put glue on the top and bottom. You could put glue on the sides if you want to do little sides, but I'm going to let it kind of bulge out a little bit. We're going to start at the top. You could start at the bottom, but let's, and then we're going to go ahead and make sure it lines up to the opening. And this is much easier if you don't use a cardstock, I'm just letting you know. And I'm kind of looking inside to make sure that the hole matches. And then just make sure you get it on. And if I have a little bit less on the top, it's okay because it's going to be hidden. And um, so you could stop, start at the bottom if you'd like. If you want it to be more uniformly... If you want it to, to show, because the bottom's going to show. So if you start on the bottom, we'll do that on the next one. Go up, and there's a little lip there. It doesn't really matter as much because um, that'll be hidden with the lid. So we'll continue with the next panel. So this time we'll go from the bottom. So this one I may need to add a little bit more glue because it is flat right here. It's easier to glue it. So I'm going to go a little bit around the door at the top. So this one will start gluing from the bottom. So if you want to do from the bottom, which will be noticeable if it's a little bit off, line up the door opening. And 
so you can see why we don't have the bottom on yet. And then we can just roll that over. Hopefully it's not going too much out of focus here. Then we want to continue on the other. So I'll do this from the bottom. And then the rest of them I'll just uh, show you rather than talk through it. So let's just start at the bottom here and then we'll do the rest of them. And the biggest thing is just make sure you don't pull them out of order. So you don't have to pay attention. And with the windows and the door, it's just getting around that opening. Getting as close as you can to checking to make sure it's lined up properly. And you can look from the other side with light. Once you get that bottom in place, I'm just kind of pulling it tight up to the top. So again, if it doesn't go to the top, which it most likely won't, it's harder with uh, cardstock than it is with paper. So just be aware of that. And then you can continue. We'll just continue putting the rest of them on. So now we'll go ahead and put on the frames. So the frames right here. So it doesn't matter which side, just pick. They're kind of opposite looks. They just have a slight curve on the outside. So you can add a little glue to the middle to attach to the vellum, but make sure it's right straight in the middle so you don't have any kind of leakage on the vellum. The same thing, be careful with the glue getting to, towards the openings. You can just make it lighter. So just line up, just like we did with the, when we were putting these two together, just line it up so that inside edge lines up. And then you'll want to reach in, make sure your hands are good and clean so you don't get any glue on the outside. And that was Suri thinking that I wanted to talk to her her, him, it, whatever. That's funny. So we'll do that on the other side. And I do this before the porch because we don't want the porch to be in the way. And I always have this handy because uh, excess glue and also washing off my fingers. So I kind of have to angle it towards me to see first. Make sure it's in the spot I want it to. Have a little glue on my thumb there shows up really well. And I'm just going around the edges. I'm just getting that glue off. So now we'll go ahead and put on the porch and see this kind of lifted a little bit so we're going to just go around the edge a little bit. I want to make sure that this is down. 
so it'll be easier to put the porch on. You can put that flat down and do this. That's the only part on the house that you can do that. So I'm just making sure that that front panel is, is flush with this edge. So let's get that porch. So it's just going to sit right here. So I'll show you from top. So we'll go ahead and put glue on the back of this. And at this point you won't be able to do that. So it's all going to be by feel. So try to get to the edge but not too much so it leaks. Let me show you. I'm going to move that out of the way. I'm going to move that out of the way for a minute. So we just want a, enough glue. So this is a little bit more precise to make sure we can get it on there well. Again, I, the first thing I did was I made it with embossed panels and that was a bit of a challenge to get on. So if you do think that's part of your strategy, you're going to have to hold it longer. So we're going to go ahead and line it up. I'll start at the bottom. So I'll just gently get it into place first. You can see it's, see it's lined up with the doorway. Now what we need to do is I'll start at the bottom and go around and apply pressure around the door to get it nice and glued. So you're going to have to do that a little bit. I usually don't show you in real time so you don't get bored, but this is an important part since I'm gluing it on that you take the time to make sure it's good and secure and not lifting. So I'm just putting my fingers in there around make sure. And you can kind of look from the edge, make sure it's pretty close on the top and the, the sides. And you can even put it aside to dry, but the more you focus on that, and it will be more secure and won't pop off on you. And that's why we use liquid glue too. So I guess somebody could use a glue gun. So let me show you the example again if you didn't see it earlier. This was an example done with embossed and I thought it was fun. But the problem is, is that it's hard, you can see the gap there it lifts. So if you're going to use embossed paper for your panels, you're going to want to hold it extra long. Okay? So just know that's going to be an issue. And you can tell this is a complete test piece. So it helps me work out the issues. So there we go. We have it right here. So the porch is on. Now we can go ahead and put the bottom piece. So you see the hole there and the tab right there? That tells you it's going to go on like this. So you could put it inside and do the other way, um, but we can just go ahead and try to fit it. It's up to you which one you want to do. So I did the base uh, the other way, so let's try it this way. Because you do have to kind of squish it in when you're putting it on. The nice part is, is you can lift, for this one you can reach in the middle to apply pressure to the tab. So let's go ahead and start with the one with the, the hole. It's number two, which is the front. And I'm going to put the textured side on the bottom, which is going to be glued to the base. We're going to line this up. 
lining up the edge and also the circle cut. So you can see, if you don't put this on correctly, it will not fit properly because of the weird shape. So you want to add glue to the rest of these tabs. Make sure they're good and uh, the first ones are good and wet still when you get to the last ones. If you do decide to put the panel on the inside, the only difference is it'll put more of a gap between the base and this. So this makes it a little bit better. So you can, we're just going to go around one edge first. Then I'm going to push that in to line that up. I'm trying not to get glue on the panel. So we just want to get it set because we can, we can apply pressure on the inside. Then we'll go with this one right here. We'll move around and do this one. I mean it could be slightly off based on how you glued it together. So you can see I have a little bit of a gap there. Just going to bend it down. The good thing about paper is that it's it's pliable. I have a little overlap right there because of that gap. But that's okay. So we're going to go ahead and just now reach in and apply pressure on the all the tabs really quick. And you could do it like this too. You don't want to push it through. I accidentally put some pressure on that. So let's just add a little glue there. That's that little flaw that I had a gap there at the end. That piece. So I'm going to pull them all together real quick and hold them while it's wet. And I also pulled that that panel down just a little bit too low. Get that glue off my fingertips. And I do have a little gap here, so. Just if you do have gaps, you can just add a little bit more glue. I'm just going to get it nice and flush. And then hold it a little bit longer. Is it like critical? It just You just don't want to see those gaps in the front. So take the time to do it right. Make sure I don't have any major gaps. And I'm just getting a piece of paper to get some glue in. So I put a little glue on here. I just want to get a little bit more glue on this front piece. It looks like I'm actually okay. I just wanted to get a little more flush here. So now that we've got that done, let me get that out so I don't put anything on it. We'll get the base. I'm trying to grab the base here, the black base. And that tells me it's the front. And also you can tell by the way it shoots out there. We're just going to get this attached. So we're just going to glue it and then apply pressure down. And what we'll want to do is, just to make sure it's centered, let's put the we're going to add this stairs to the little base down there. It'll help us place the house. 
I'm just kind of making sure it's centered. You can look on the bottom. This is slightly smaller than, it, than the actual. Just be careful pushing that too much because you don't want to push that down. And I didn't add glue to this either, so let's go ahead and add a little glue back here. Just kind of hold it in place. So let's dry fit it. See how this curves down? How tight that'll go? That'll be to the sides. We're just going to glue that to the sides. You can let it hang too, but... There we go. We need to get those... These little edges need to go beyond the edge here. So right now, as you can see, it's I haven't glued it yet, and it's staying in place. So let's pull that off gently. And we're going to do add glue to everything, including the back of this, the stairs. So you want to make sure that we clear the porch edges. So I'll show you in a minute. I'm only being particular about the edge. I want to make sure that I have enough wetness to adhere it pretty close to the edges. And obviously the So that's what it looks like on the back. It looks kind of messy, huh? So we're going to pull those apart as we gently put it on. So let's see if I can do it over the camera. So it's going to be tight on the front. I'm going to pull it towards the front. And you can see that that is getting past the edge there. It also helps us center it a little bit better. You see it's auto centering it for us. And make sure that goes on both sides down. So don't make sure it doesn't get stuck on the on the base, this part right here. So now that you've had we have that on, we're just gonna hold it down. And then I'm gonna hold it down and push on the stairs at the same time. So I'm pushing the stairs in as you can see with this left hand and holding it down. You could also go upside down and just gently do this, but I still had to push the stair in. So when this comes down right here, the porch, it almost goes to the bottom. I didn't want it to be too far because it depends on the paper you use and how people assemble it. So it's very close to the bottom. So if you want to, you can go ahead and Leave it as is, or just, oops, add a little glue to that bottom piece. Clean that off here. As you're holding it. So, and then we have this glued to the side so it stays, it's all attached now. So you want to hold that for a little bit. Going out of focus here, so let me. So there's not much to glue that, so let's flip it over again. Make sure everything seems like it's secure, so you can see the front of it. The stairs are in place, the porch is on, and uh, we have the base on now. So we'll go ahead and put the hat on. And that will finish it. I mean, I'm going to add a couple little bit more embellishments to it, but that's basically the house as it is. So you can see a spider. The spider may make it on the finally. That is a, a fake spider, by the way. But it may made it, make it to the hat. I'm not quite sure yet. We'll see. So just add your little personal touches. You're going to add a little um, handle for the door. 
And then anything else you want to do, like maybe some spooky trees or something that like that. I obviously don't have any, but I'm sure there's, I know there's others that do. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, um, please give me, again, a little like, thumbs up below. And I thank you so much for watching.